First up is Kristen Henderson. It's a good thing I got here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you missed your spot. Yeah, should I stand? Yes. yes. every year since I was 12 and when my husband who uh, is a physicist at the lab had opportunities in three different parts of the country I thought this was absolutely where we wanted to come um, so this is really heavy All right. okay I'm gonna wing it anyway um, so my background is I have an undergraduate degree from Claremont McKenna in philosophy and I have a law degree from UCLA um, my working background is that I have practice law, and then I actually moved into software, and this is a really important background, I think, for this job, because I was the person in the middle, I'm a non-technical person, but I was the product manager who worked with all these different groups to define what the software would be, and we ended up making great software that's still in use today, but we had really disparate groups of people that I had to bring together, and I think that's a skill set I have to work within the community to listen to all the different viewpoints and help bring together the most important common elements. Um, after we moved here, I was a stay-at-home mom, and this, I think, is also a really important background to have for this job, because I think even with our economic development, one of our most important things is to make sure we have a lively and interesting town that helps the lab to recruit, and that would also help economic diversity help those people to stay here and to recruit. And having a town that works for everybody, including the families that are here, I think is a really important background. Um, because both the jobs I had in the past were incredibly time intensive, I chose to work here in a job where I can control my own time more, and that's as a real estate agent. And that also is a great background. I know people get tired of realtors running for office here, I've heard. <laughs> but frankly, I think it's helpful. I know all of the White Rock neighborhoods. I've been in all of our floor plans. I know all of our many, not all of our floor plans, but of the ones in White Rock, and, and all of the neighborhoods certainly in town and a lot of our issues about our housing and what, we, what possibilities we might do to move forward. The reason I chose to run for office is I believe in this town. This is an incredible place to live, and we do have people who move here specifically to live here because it's safe and it's beautiful and we have good schools and we have, you know, the lab here. But we do need to take all of us into account when we make our decisions. And we have a lot of important decisions coming up. And that's what I would commit to do, is to take all of us into account, including those of us who'd like some reasonable progress and our families in town. Um, and that's basically why I'm here. And I look forward to this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up in the rotation, Michael Redondo. Hi, my name is Michael Redondo. Uh, I grew up in Los Alamos. I moved here when I was three years old. Um, of course, that wasn't uh, a choice I made, but uh, I've come to love this town. Um, this is my home, and I'm running for office uh, for a number of reasons. Um, you know, I, I left to go to college, um, and after getting my bachelor's degree, I came back. Um, and had the opportunity to join the Peace Corps. So I left again uh, and served as an environmental conservation uh, volunteer in the Republic of Panama. Um, after returning, uh, I uh, started a, a small business here in town. It didn't um, work well enough for me to make a living. Uh, so I left again uh, to get a master's degree. Um, I got a master's degree in community and regional planning um, and have since returned to town again. Um, I own a small business here. I do a number of things to try and make a living um, from uh, my uh, planning consulting firm to uh, I make handmade pottery and I'm selling that. I also referee high school soccer. So I'm doing everything I can to make a living, but it's not easy. And one of the, the main reasons I'm running for council is because um, I want this to be a town where young people like myself can return to town and actually make a living and not necessarily have to work at the lab. Um, I also want this to be a town where young people um, graduate from high school, uh, plan to go away for college, but also plan to return. I want this to be the kind of town where people want to stay, um, particularly young people. There uh, really aren't a whole lot of us uh, that, that remain. And I think there are a lot of things that I can do, given my background in planning, um, to help us move forward and help us retain those people. Um, one of the big things that uh, 
I really would like to see done is have us uh, take a look at our development code, the, uh, the zoning code um, that was written in 1968. It hasn't been really updated since. We've had some minor updates. We're looking at potentially updating the, the sign code portion of that. Um, but I think there's a lot we can do uh, to help uh, particularly small businesses and diversification of our economy so that this can be a place where, where young people um, can stay and succeed. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Next up is Pete Sheehy. Good evening. I'm Pete Sheehy. I've lived and worked here since 1986 after serving in the Air Force and going back to school to earn a PhD in physics at UCLA. I've had a satisfying career at X Division at the lab, but I retired in the VSP this April. I'm still a guest scientist, but I'm happy to have the extra time to give to my family and community. The people I work with will tell you I'm a hard worker and a team player. In working with bipartisan political groups, such as the Los Alamos Committee on Arms Control and International Security, I learned from my late friend Dave Thompson how to be an effective advocate. Be persistent, be well informed, and make balanced arguments. I've been active in the community, such as serving on the Los Alamos County Planning and Zoning Commission since 2008. In my work at the lab and in the community, I've been a consensus builder. And I think I've shown the judgment, stamina, patience, and good humor needed to make a good county councilor for this town. When I ask people what they think about their county government, they tell me they're concerned about the aggressive, some say extravagant, spending being done by the county at a time when the lab's budget and the county's budget is being cut. At the same time, they want us to go ahead with important investments in education, infrastructure, and economic development things that will help us make our town a more inviting place for everyone, from students and single people, to families with children, to retired people. I've done all of these things in my time here. I think I can help provide a balance between these concerns. I'm ready to take the time to look carefully at everything our county spends money on. In Tax revenues spent wisely on education, infrastructure, and economic development are good investments for Los Alamos, and they'll pay off for all of us in the long run. But we have to be totally honest with the taxpayers about the costs and benefits if we expect their support for such investments. People are in pretty good agreement about priorities, public safety, infrastructure, education, and economic development, followed by improvements to our recreational amenities. Economic development is a priority for this town. I look forward to discussing today how we can improve that. We can afford all the important things for our community as long as we prioritize. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Up next, Vincent Chirvon. I moved to Los Alamos uh, in 2003 uh, to take a staff position at the laboratory. Uh, and after working here for a few years, I was humbled and honored uh, to be elected to the Los Alamos County Council in 2008. In my spare time, I serve as a lector at uh, the Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish, and I'm also a member of the Knights of Columbus. This year, I had the honor to um, fund a, a hole at the tournament to sponsor, uh, where the proceeds would sponsor uh, local high school students uh, with scholarships. During my time on the County Council, I voted consistently against wasteful spending. I did not support uh, the new municipal building, not because I don't believe we need a municipal building, but I feel the one that we chose was too big and expensive for our community. I was the County Councilor who voted against the $380,000 study for roundabouts on Trinity Drive, not because I don't want to see improvements to our sidewalks and more pedestrian access, but because I had concerns about the concept, and ultimately it was proven that the single uh, lane roundabouts would not work on Trinity. And finally, when we had a uh, visitor center in White Rock, I voted against a $1 million increase in the budget, because I believe as elected officials, we have to hold the line on our budgets. 
we cannot count on continued GRT revenue from the laboratory, and it's likely that there will be reductions in the future. The most important job of a public official is to look carefully and critically at spending. And I'm running for re-election to be a common sense, fiscal conservative voice on the council. I feel that we need to make as our highest priority attracting more young families to live in our community. And we can do that by supporting our public schools. And that's why as county councilor, I introduced an ordinance that would give our public schools 100% of the least money from the Trinity site, $512,000 uh, a year initially, so that our children can have the best educational opportunities. I feel that we have to make uh, more housing and retail options available in our community through private enterprise, and the county has a number of mechanisms that we can utilize to bring that about. And finally, we have to be a champion of small businesses and technology companies that are just getting started. The county is in a unique role to help, and we're going to talk about later this evening some ways that we can help. But I feel that as county councilor, I have been very supportive of new technology companies getting started in our community. County government has a unique role and, there's only, and can do things that other entities cannot do in the community. I believe we can make investments in our community and live within our means, and that's why I'm running for another term on the county council. Thank you, Vince. Next is uh, Mark Blake. <clears throat> I spent some time writing this, so I think I'm going to read it tonight. Uh, I'm a New Mexico son. I was born and raised in Santa Fe, and I've been a resident of northern New Mexico for over 40 years. Since 1983, my family and I have lived in Los Alamos County, about half in White Rock and half in Los Alamos. My wife, Bonnie, and I have our families have a long history in the community. Our relatives have worked at C.D. Fox, been a ranger at Bandelier, opened the first shoe store in town, planted the grass at the schools, and been a producer for plays at Los Alamos Little Theater. My wife, Bonnie, and I also have a, been a parents of six children and one grandchild, ranging them from 29 years to four months. And our children have been had the opportunity to attend almost all of the schools in the county and live in almost every neighborhood. Uh, I am a U.S. veteran, serving for six years on board the nation's first nuclear-powered service ship, USS Long Beach. I have an associate degree from this school, UNMLA, a Bachelor of Science from Regents College, and a Master's degree from Duke University in Injury Management. I started my career in 1983 here at Los Alamos at uh, the Clinton P. Anderson Mason Physics Facility, now Lance. I have a hard time still calling it Lance. I want to call it Lance. Since that time, I have had the opportunity to work across the institution, and at one time or another, I've, had, I've been in almost every technical area at Los Alamos. Uh, I have been a manager at the laboratory since 2003 and have effectively and efficiently managed large staffs and multi-million dollar budgets. I'm a graduate of Leadership Los Alamos and Leadership New Mexico and serve on the board of Leadership Los Alamos and the Power Ranger Chaplain Service. I have been engaged and involved in the community for many years through Leadership Los Alamos, through Scouts, through my coaching with Los Alamos schools. I understand the community and the regional issues we all face and have a great deal of leadership and management experience to make a difference. I excel at building coalitions that define problems, develop solutions, and achieve results. I find ways to turn no into yes, to be positive, to add value, and to provide the most benefit for the most people while always being an excellent steward of the taxpayers' dollars. <clears throat> That's a little bit about who I am. Uh, I want to thank you all for taking the time to attend this forum and learn more about me and my position on the issues. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Last but not least, Steve Gerrans. Hi, I'm Steve Gerrans, and uh, I moved to Los Alamos in 1979. Uh, started a job at the lab as a mechanical engineer. So I've been in town over 33 years lived in White Rock most of that time, and the one thing I want to point out is over those 33 years, I've been about every kind of different volunteer that you can be in this town, okay? Some of the earlier volunteers were not very, very official volunteers, they were more like clubs, um, softball organizations, things like that. Uh, little League, okay? My Little League team won the uh, county tournament in 1983, so I've um, been engaged with those kind of activities. Uh, then, 
And the other thing I want to point out about myself is that I grew up on a farm. I grew up on a dairy. And I think that's an important thing because in my formative years, I want you to know that uh, uh, we didn't spend beyond our means. Uh, there's no way we could. So then, uh, to be honest, back in February or March, uh, just running for this job was the furthest thing from my mind. And uh, it was not on my mind. And uh, I'm filling a position that was vacated when Roger Waterman uh, stepped out. He went through the primary. So I'm a fill in, okay? So, but why did I decide to fill in? Uh, when you take a step back and you see what's going on, a key thing that's important to me now is the county's at a critical tipping point. Uh, there's a lot of progress that's being planned, a lot of things to move forward. And uh, being who I am and being who I, how I've contributed to county government and to the schools and to the various activities over the last few years, uh, I didn't want to stand on the side. I'd rather have the reins in my hands than in somebody else's. So that's basically why I'm competing for this job. I want to be one of the people that's in the, in the seven chairs. Okay, so. I'm going to read to you what I wrote down two months ago when I started this exercise, this uh, exciting uh, journey, and these are my priorities. I'm an advocate for balanced community investments, especially infrastructure revitalization. I'm a proponent of the county's established economic vitality priorities, which we'll probably be talking some tonight. A supporter of the positive momentum promoting regional partnerships and collaborations. That's Los Alamos leading the regional community uh, in support of the laboratory, by the way, and a voice for mutually beneficial collaborations with the schools. Okay, uh, thanks. Thank you, Steve. That brings us to the question and answer period. And I think Stan is going to kick it off with the first question. That brings us to the question and answer period. And I think Stan is going to kick it off with the first question. Uh, Mike, is that on? Okay. Yes. I'd like to remind everybody that this is a uh, forum that is addressing business and economic issues, and those specifically. Uh, the first question. First question is uh, somewhat a long question, multifaceted. What does the concept of business friendliness mean to you? The chamber has made this issue a part of our candidate forum since 2010. Do you see a clear example of the county becoming more business friendly since 2010? And also, are there any business friendliness initiatives? That you would champion. I want to remind the candidates that all the responses are two minutes, and Vincent, you lead off. For me, business friendliness means uh, having a positive experience with the county. When you're a small business and you're trying to get something done, having the county be your ally instead of being an obstacle. And I feel within the last year, we have made progress in making our community more business friendly. And the one example that I would cite uh, would be the changes that we've made in our process for applying for a commercial uh, site plan and for a commercial building permit. With regard to the commercial site plan, the county has changed the application from going from 19 pages down to nine pages. That's the kind of simplification that we need. In addition, the county has instituted a pre-application meeting where members of the county staff will meet with the interested party and they will go over the process, provide the necessary forms, explain what needs to be done. And this type of pre-application meeting I think is essential in order to work out the issues and make sure there's an understanding before the process begins of what's required. Although this is very good progress and I'm a strong supporter of it, there's more work to be done. Uh, we have been able to reduce the time 
for the average uh, commercial building permit issuance from 30 days down to 21 days. And I feel we need to go further so that when people want to expand their business, they know that it's not going to be a multi-week or multi-month process. We have to make sure the businesses know what to expect up front. And we have to make the process as simple as possible for businesses to apply for these kind of permits. So we've made progress, but there's more work to do, and I'm confident that we can get it done. Thank you, Vince. Mark? I can tell you what business friendliness is not, to start with. Who knows who the 50th ranked state is in the United States for business friendliness? New Mexico. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that, and, and the, what goes for New Mexico happens to go for Los Alamos at some level, too. Uh, GRT is, is a problem for, for a lot of people. Uh, also, litigation is a problem. It's, this is a very litigious state, and it's easy to sue, uh, and so companies are shy, are shy away from those kind of things. Uh, uh, th th those are two big things that happen in this state that really cause problems. Uh, Los Alamos happens to have a problem with GRT, too. We have to pay GRT as well. But there are other things that we can do as a state uh, that, uh, that, and as, as a local community that we can really help in these areas. The county can provide tax incentives to offset some of those GRT revenue problems. They can offer incentives for utilities to try to reduce costs. They can try to build partnerships, which we'll talk about later, uh, with, with private organizations to try to find ways to try to move us forward to try to provide small business in this community. Uh, business friendly can also mean that you have a workforce that is readily available to try to work in, the, in whatever that you've, you've done. Los Alamos isn't great at that, except for Los Alamos Laboratory. Uh, so, for example, if we wanted to have something, there was some program at UNMLA that we wanted to train people to then be able to put into high-tech business in town here. Uh, those are things that we can do as a county. We can be an engine that we can create those opportunities. Uh, we, we, we can't stop the state regulations, but we can offset those things and try to attract people to come here. So that's what I'll be about as we try to be more business friendly. Thank you, Mark. Steve, you're up next. I think we've been making some progress in the last year, year and a half, in becoming more business friendly. And I, a lot of the reason for that is a stable leadership team in the county administration. And and also, we're backfilling some of the positions. We do have an uh, economic vitality director now, and that helps. Uh, uh, leadership in this area comes down from the top. I think it's been a priority of the council, but more than that, it's been a priority of, of the county administrator leadership team. And a classic example of that, uh, practice in what you preach, is when Harry took uh, Denise, Smith, Denise Smith's, uh, Denise Lane's, uh, uh, license over to her, walked it over to her and said, here, here it is for you to sign. If you get this signed, we can move this quicker down the next process. So I think that's kind of reaching out and really uh, making a change. The, uh, the other thing that got me about this question is, uh, you, you know, you guys are asking us what's changed in two years. Well, I found a couple of cool things. Just this last year in Maine, uh, they started this little uh, activity here where they made all their towns. The governor of Maine did this initiative and it's basically an application form to be certified as a business friendly town. But what's cool about it is it has all these little questions and all these little categories. Customer service, customer capacity, uh, economic priorities, uh, business local involvement collaboration, notice for public comment. I mean here's a, a little test or a little t a thing we can do fill out ourselves and keep track of how we're improving. And, you know, it becomes like a, an improvement plan. And uh, the other thing is, is, this is serious. Because the same thing is being done in Malaysia. They don't want to get trapped. They want to be able to grow. So there's some tools here where we can keep track of how business friendly we are and then not just have to kick it around every two years when we have an election. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Steve. Kristen? Mark, fix this for me. Uh, business friendliness to me is, is absolutely having a positive attitude towards the businesses in town when they come to the county that the, the things that they need to get done are not stalemated or put off, but there's a positive attitude to try to figure out how it is we can help get those things done. 
Um, I do know that <clears throat> that has been a policy since 2010 to try to, <clears throat> excuse me, help those kinds of things. And the things that I've seen happen so far, at least, include, you know, we do have a county manager now who has that as a goal and a priority, and he has done some reorganization to help try to accommodate that. Um, it, it comes into play not just with the businesses, but with the buildings they're in. And, you know, I know in trying to talk to some of the businesses around town and asking them, how does it go for you? How does this work? How are, how are things for you here? Many times their issues are building issues. You know, they'll have an issue with the building and they can't get it fixed or they fix it the way they believe they're supposed to, only to have someone come back and tell them they fixed it wrong. And that's expensive for our businesses in town. That's not business friendly. So as a council, your goal is setting priorities and policies, and it's not getting down in there and telling you know, our county staff how to do their job, but I do think it's important as a council to continue to have that as a priority and to monitor it and to check in with it, make sure that that is still a policy and a plan that the, that the county employees have, that they're moving forward with trying to make it more business friendly. Um, one of the things I think, there, there's several things that I think um, we can we can talk about, but and we will in, in this meeting, but business friendliness also can be what kind of utilities are here, and I know we're looking into should we have broadband here, and is the hardware for that something the county should be participating in building, and I know as, as an agent when people consider coming to town, and there's lots of people who can move anywhere in the country, and they want a lovely place like this, but they're going to look at things like do we have broadband, and how reliable are our utilities before they decide to move here. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Michael? I'm going to uh, rely on my planning background to answer this question. Um, currently, under our zoning code, it is illegal to brew beer and serve it in the same building. Um, so someone <clears throat> who potentially wanted to start a microbrewing business, um, that's illegal. Um, that doesn't sound particularly business friendly to me, at least not to that type of business. Um, so, you know, brewing beer is an industrial process, it has to be done in an industrial zone. Serving beer and food is, is something that must be done in a commercial zone. So you can't legally do the same, the two in the same building. You could apply for a variance, um, but that might take easily six months. Um, so, you know, that's a, a major impediment uh, to that kind of business. Um, there are many other examples of, of this sort of thing in, in our development code. And so, you know, that's something I think that we can really look forward, um, look at, at how, we've, uh, how we can potentially update our codes to make our county much more business friendly for a wider array of businesses. Um, and that's, it's a discussion that we need to have. Perhaps the, the members of this community don't want any microbreweries and, and they're happy with the current situation. Um, I don't necessarily think that's the case. Um, I've talked to a lot of people who want that sort of business in town. Um, and so I think we really uh, need to have a discussion about um, what sort of, of businesses we want and what can we do uh, at, at that structural level to make this a much more business friendly uh, town. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Hey, I'm going to wrap up this uh, question for us. Business friendliness means the county and the council is supportive of all legitimate business proposals, that it works to eliminate overly restrictive requirements, and it helps businesses meet the legitimate requirements of the law. It also means the council needs to be watching carefully and constantly engaging our state and federal governments when they're taking actions that may have a big impact on our community. I've been involved in the Planning and Zoning Commission on helping streamline the permitting process, and we have reduced the time necessary to get permits. There's still some room for improvement, though. The recent delay in getting the sign approved at the new Smith's gas station was something it should have been caught by county staff much earlier in the process. In some cases, even though the P&Z Commission is business friendly, we have to turn down uh, promising business proposals because they don't meet the requirements of the laws that the council has passed. In some cases, minor remodeling of a downtown business 
um, to meet the needs of, of growth is not allowed. It becomes a major update to, to modern uh, code. As long as a, a minor remodeling can be done safely, we don't have to require updates to latest code. Another effort, two other efforts PMZ has been involved in uh, are a major update of the comprehensive plan, which is very big, hard to read, but developers and businesses have to meet the, the goals of that plan when they apply for uh, a new project. Another uh, part of that that we hope that the council will soon approve is a recommended uh, change to the sign code. It should not be difficult to have a sign out for your business. Thanks, Pete. That brings us to our next question. Question two. What is the concept of public-private partnership, the last few words were in quotes, mean to you? What do you think are good examples of how such a partnership should work and why?
few years. The key to affordable starting houses is lower land prices. Land that the county has can be used to make that possible. Another example is a community broadband system. It would be great to have such a system, but the wrong way to go about this is to ask the community to pay for a big bond issue and put it in and then let the private sector run it and make the money. The right way is what we're already doing. Every time the utilities department digs a trench, a big trench, put in some conduit, be ready uh, later on to work with private industry to start using that conduit, and we share the cost, we'll share the benefits. That's um, how to do it. Thank you, Ben. Ben Trench. A public-private partnership takes advantage of the things that businesses can do well and the things that the county is uniquely suited to do well. One very good example is when the county uses the authority given to it by the state legislature to give grants and loans to technology companies so they can get started. A $2 million investment in a New Mexico consortium, uh, which is a biofuel research entity, which I supported in the council, has brought with it 50 employees to Los Alamos, and tens of millions of dollars of research money in this exciting new field of technology. These are the kinds of things we have to support to grow our research park and the Entrada Business Park. And just today, in this building, a new computer was dedicated uh, that has 2,500 nodes for science. Uh, these are the kind, and that would not have been, and one of the principal players in that was the New Mexico Consortium. This would not have been possible if the county did not make its investment. Uh, another good example is the Affordable Housing Ordinance, which I voted for as county council. And what that allows the council to do is to offer a discount to developers so they can go into land such as the A19, uh, and they have a discount if they put in affordable homes. If they were to put in Oppenheimer apartments on a parcel of the A19 land, we could give them a discount. Uh, if, if they were to put in student housing so that more students could live here in town and attend UNMLA, the council can give them a discount. And by having more students in town, those students can serve as a workforce for our local businesses. And we can expand the programs that are offered here at UNMLA, and one day uh, this institution can become a four-year university, which I believe is a goal that we should strive to. But all of that can help be brought about by the tools that the county has, the Affordable Housing Ordinance and our loan and grant program. Hey, Vince, uh, Martin, next. Public-private uh, partnership to me means that a public institution like government and a private institution like Smith's or whatever manage to come to an agreement that is the mutual benefit of both. Okay, so. That's something that we would want to strive for as much as we can legally allow in Los Alamos County. An example of that would be the, the, the complex but multi-unit uh, 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 arrangement that was made with Smiths uh, with, with, their, with their leasing of, of the lands and, and the schools in Los Alamos County. That's an example of when that would happen. Uh, uh, those kind of things that we can do along with trying to find ways to partner with uh, private business that we can advance affordable housing or take advantage of some of the space that we have. Those are things that, as a council, that we need to, to pursue creatively. Uh, let me give you an example of something that would be a creative way, creative thought, that we can put this together. Smith's is moving across the street. That's going to that's create a, an empty space. <coughs> UNMLA needs space for, for, for an engineering practice, right? So to try to further their engineering thing. So could there be some arrangement where the county worked with Smith's to somehow acquire that property at some low value and then somehow get it back to you in MLA so they could have a leadership uh, program for, for engineering that they could then feed into the engineering uh, companies that we might bring up to Los Alamos. That would be an example of something we could do. Now that would be creative, there would be a lot of work to do something like that, but that's the kind of thing that we would be thinking of. How could we use the space we have, multi-use of different organizations, including public and private, that we could advance our economic vitality. So. Those are the kind of creative things that I would be pursuing and looking at and seeing if those are viable options to try to do those kind of things. So anyway, 
uh, as a community, if we can think creatively along those lines, we can move forward rather than just the usual, I'm going to give you a tax incentive. So uh, are, are there things that we can do to try to move those programs forward? Thank you, Mark. Steve, you're next. So public-private partnerships are when they come together to achieve mutually beneficial objectives. Okay, so that's one thing that you got to remember. If there's not a win-win in for both of them, it's doomed from the start. And so what are some of the things that have worked here in the town or worked in the county that are good examples of public-private partnerships? Well, uh, one of the really early ones was LACDC. Okay. Uh, this county money behind LACDC is a 501 created perform a service outside of the county. And there's another one recently um, that Vincent brought up. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into public private partnerships. There's a lot of work that goes into some of these deals before they magically show up for a vote. Okay, and uh, so there's a lot of of uh, nuances, and then there's and then there's uh, different groups that have to come together to make these things happen. And what we saw with the Algol Research Center is probably one of the more sophisticated things we've ever done yet. And that is, that had the lab involved, county involved, uh, a 501 consortium involved. So that was, that's the other end of the spectrum. That's very sophisticated, but the payoff is high. We have people come to town. New people come to town, live, work, and, uh, and economic diversification. Win-win for the county is it meets our vitality goals. I think the Smiths working as a developer, that's meeting our objectives. That's meeting vitality objectives for the city. That's another example of a public-private partnership. We can't turn anything down, but there's got to be something in it. There's not just hand money out for free. Okay? That's not uh, the way that uh, has to work. There has to be a win in it for the community when we uh, have these proposals brought in front of us. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Kristen, you want to wrap this one up for us? Okay. Yeah. Public-private partnership is definitely when, when both the private sector and the public sector come together to work on something, and they're both contributing. And it doesn't, from the public sector, it doesn't have to necessarily be cash. It could, in some instances, be help in coordination, help in communication, help in branding. It might, in some instances, be an actual investment. To me, a perfect example actually is Trinity Site. I was asked to serve on that citizens committee, and I, I did that for two years. And to me, that's an amazing example where the federal government initially contributed land. There had to be all kinds of land swaps. And now this, our schools will be getting rental income. We had to pay as a community to move buildings, but of course, let's be honest, they were Quonset huts, several of them were condemned, that we were needing to be doing some infrastructure investment anyway. So they were moved, and now we're going to have a $26 million investment from a private entity into our community to be building something that we really need, which is a general merchandise store that will help all of our businesses to get income. Um, some other good examples include, there's an, there was an entity that came here and proposed if we invested 10%, they would invest 90%, and they had done this several other places where they take an area of downtown that's fairly dilapidated, and if they can strike the right deal, they will completely remodel it and do uh, the kind of live-work situation where you have small retail stores down below and, and living facilities up above, and that's a fantastic partnership, and that would be something that might be worth our investment. Um, I also think in terms of coordination, there's any number of things. We are a small town and in a, in a fairly isolated place, we can coordinate with a lot of things. One idea I've been talking to people about is coordinating something where we have those gourmet lunch trucks come out. And some of the, several of the restaurants in town would be willing to do that. Kenny's Barbecue already has that. And if we coordinate it with our bus system where they go up to the lab and let's say everyone There, there are 
are four goals in the economic plan. Most of you know what those are. One is to support the laboratory as the main employer. One is to really improve the uh, quality of life. Uh, the third is going to be to increase affordable housing. And then the other is to diversify the economy. Those are the four major goals. So what projects would we have to try to maybe touch on those? Most of the projects that we do in Los Alamos today, a lot of them really relay around the quality of life goal. Uh, for example, trying to work on improving the, the infrastructure and then building an arena, or I'm sorry, building an a, 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 a entertainment center at the pond would be an example of a quality of a life initiative that could also ha actually help our economic vitality, right? We, we, we draw lots of people here for Gordon's Concert Series, for example. That's a real showcase of the town. A lot of people know the pond. Uh, and it's really a centerpiece. So if we put some money and some effort into that, that'll benefit a lot of residents today and maybe attracting people to come up here, which could help with some, some people at least get an idea coming up here. Uh, we do need to, uh, there, there isn't a project necessarily that talks on goal number one. We do need to be a partner with the laboratory as things go up and down a little bit. I mean, GRT is not going to go away as long as the state decides to keep having GRT, but what will happen is that that'll, that'll go up and down. So how do we manage and work with the laboratory closely to, to, to what, follow what they're doing as we manage as a council the amount of funds that we have available? So that will affect future, future uh, projects. Uh, we, we do need to work on, uh, again, we just talked about a partnership. How are we going to make A19 and other land transfers really work for us to help for affordable housing? Not just buying houses, but also rental uh, availability. Uh, people who are going to come up for economic diversity aren't necessarily going to be able to buy a house when, when they're here the first time they move here. It may be a while before they can, but they have to live here. Uh, also going to be spending four bucks a gallon on gas to drive back and forth. So how are we going to make that work here and as a county? That's something that I'll be dedicated to working on. Thanks, Mark. Steve, you're up next. So to answer this question, I just put down some uh, projects that are already proposed that I think uh, hit uh, as many of the four uh, vitality goals as Mark just told you. And um, one of them that's real close to my heart is the uh, White Rock Civic uh, 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 Activity, Civic, uh, Civic Center uh, Library, and then in partnership with that, the A19 uh, development. That has a promise for commercial, for residential, for mixed housing, for tourist leverage, and for White Rock community amenities. Uh, so that's economic development, community uh, quality of life, affordable housing, and then, and then also all of these help the lab if we're making it easier for, or more attractive for people to come to stay, to be employed. The other thing that I think is a, a really great gaggle of projects pulled together that uh, meet those objectives are this, we've got to have this Trinity site anchor retail. Uh, that's improved uh, foodstuffs and general merchandise. Um, that's going to keep more money on the hill. That's economic development. Uh, that's quality of life. And then the other thing that goes with the Smiths thing is this downtown creative district. I think that has lots of potential. I think people should, that are interested in that, volunteer to get on that uh, committee that they're looking for to help pull that together. Um, and then the other thing that's so key with that cultural district and that Smiths and that foodstuffs is it's about time we get this teen center thing done. I've been, we've been looking for that for a long time. So those three things together is what's going to make the downtown great. Thanks, Steve. I'm glad that we already have this economic vitality plan in place, and I think they are important goals to to move towards. And I actually think there are a lot of things that do help us to help the lab, and that was one of the platforms I'm running on, and the way I see that is if we have a vital and economic and, and lively and interesting town that meets our needs first, that helps the town, that helps the lab in its recruitment and retention, and helps it to be able to continue to be a world-class place when it is, when the town is an extra asset in whether or not somebody decides to move here. We, we are already a great place, but we do need to consider some of these other, other things that we can do to help it. Um, I, I, I think in terms of economic diversity, I think one of the things we can absolutely do is try to work towards helping evolve UNMLA and helping it to draw on all the amazing people who are here and to build a four-year program and to pick specific 
you and MLA will be the ones to do this, but pick the fields in which they really want to be world class and specialists here. And I think that's going to help our economic diversity. Um, I also believe, as Steve said, I think having our, our teen center here, having the, the nature center, having all those things that help it to make a better town, they help economic diversity because they help people to see, hey, this is a great town to move to, and it helps to strengthen the lab. Um, in terms of our available and affordable housing, there are so many so many things we could do. One of them, of course, is to help finance the infrastructure so it makes A19 or some of the other land that's coming to the county that the county will then turn and sell to private developers. If we can help invest in the infrastructure, it's possible for them to have some more affordable housing. But there's other creative things we can do. I have never lived in a town that has so many empty houses. Um, and I think we could we could develop some kind of a program and maybe in a public-private partnership where we reach out to those families around the country who have inherited these homes and you know maybe we invest a little bit and they commit to rent for a while we have some affordable housing. I mean there could be lots of creative things that we could do that. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Michael? I think I'm going to to single out affordable housing on this one. Um, in many ways because I think it helps reach some of the other goals. Um, by providing affordable housing, we're supporting the lab. Um, you know, uh, some of the younger postdocs, for example, often leave because they have difficulty um, finding affordable housing. Uh, for the economic vitality, uh, a lot of retail businesses um, need employees that are willing to work at a, a lower wage. And in order to work at a lower wage, you have to be able to afford to live here. Um, unless you're willing to commute from the valley. And that has added uh, transportation costs, which really make it prohibitive in a lot of cases um, to have employees that are willing to work at, the, at those lower wages. So I think you know, affordable housing is, is really important. Um, and one of the things, when I think about affordable housing, I really am reticent to pursue the, the normal course of you know, let's give a discount to a developer if he includes affordable housing. Because when you do that, um, the affordable housing, it might be affordable for the first person who buys it, but then it raises up to the property values elsewhere. And what you're doing is you're giving a discount to someone to build more homes that end up competing against the rest of the homes. Um, uh, and we have, uh, like Kristen said, a lot of vacant homes. So one of the methods that I would like to look at is you know, the idea of a land trust. Um, you know, if, if the county has a lot of land, perhaps have a partnership with the land trust where the, the land stays with the trust and um, you, a developer will build houses, apartments, uh, affordable housing, um, which can then be bought, but the land beneath it is leased. So the, the raising property values um, stay with the land. And the next person who buys it ends up uh, also having affordable housing as well. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. I don't believe that any one project will magically create economic vitality here. We do have to make sure we get maximum value from all the capital improvement projects that have been started. Recreational amenities will attract tourists to stay here and spend money, and they'll make people feel better about buying a home here. But I place a higher priority on reinvigorating downtown Los Alamos and White Rock so that people will get a good first impression of our town and want to stick around encouraging more local business development. Uh, the county does have land that it can leverage to help get better housing or commercial space available. But we will have to invest money to make that land attractive for development, as has been mentioned. I think better execution of lots of little things, getting our zoning and sign codes easier for business to work with, supporting and promoting the exciting work going on right here at UNMLA, and promoting tourism more actively are just as important to achieving economic vitality as any big project. One suggestion that deserves examination is to develop the old Smith's store after they move into the Trinity site into a UNMLA engineering center. There really is a need here for more room for that exciting work. 
I think getting the Manhattan Project National Historic Park started here, getting the Valles Caldera under National Park Service Management, and working together with Bandelier and the Valles Caldera to promote tourism here would also give a needed boost to local retail. Thank you, Pete. Vince, you want to wrap this one up for us? Throughout its history, Los Alamos County has had the persistent challenge of having available land for new housing and retail opportunities. We have an exciting uh, opportunity with the land, the 60-acre A19 parcel in White Rock that's next to the firehouse. But in order for that to be developed, the county needs to have a plan. And I've asked the staff to bring a master plan to the council so we can approve it and begin to move forward and have some development on this site. Uh, there are many challenges with developing the A19 land. The county is in a unique position to make investments to put in road and utility infrastructure so that the land and parcels of it can be sold to private developers and new retail and housing options can be made available to the citizens of White Rock and the citizens of Los Alamos County. Affordable housing has a number of components. I think one of the most important components is rental units. The county, through its Affordable Housing Act, can offer a discount to developers to put in rental units so that young families can get started here. If we could attract between 50 or 100 young families to come in our community, individuals who normally would be commuting to work in Los Alamos County, if we can get them to come here and spend their dollars in our community, uh, this is the best way to further economic development. And so I'm a very strong supporter of moving forward with A19 land and the other lands that we have in the county. We have uh, land that's adjacent to the Trinity site. Uh, we have the old uh, Los Alamos Site Administration Office. Uh, there are many other parcels of land in the county which we haven't had, and we were able to acquire those parcels by working through federal legislation and working with the DOE so they would turn those lands over. for many businesses in the community. The general economic situation in the world, changing business models with respect to the internet and consumer shopping preferences, and pressures on lab budgets and projects are all having an effect on local businesses, whether they be retailers, professional and technical services companies, hospitality businesses, service providers, service providers of all types, or nonprofits. Here's the question. What can and should the county government be working on to be supportive of our businesses in this difficult environment? Steve, you're going to leave this one off, of course. So what can the county government be working on yeah. in, in this environment? Be supportive. To be supportive of businesses? Right. Okay, well, I've got a litany. <laughs> Go for it. Signage regulations? Regulations? service permits, local preference ordinance, low rent industrial with office trailers. I like that one, Andy. <laughs> Downtown pedestrian safety, code enforcement, uh, flexible creative zoning land use, uh, mixed usage opportunities, county branding, work internships for youth, internet access broadband, Oh, and this is controversial, okay, if you want to help on taxes. Maybe we should roll back or put some kind of ceiling on property valuation. Thank you, Steve. Kristen? You know, I, first of all, I agree with almost that whole list. 
So I think I think there are a lot of things like that we can do in terms of our our regulations and our zoning and fixing this, the sign code. I absolutely, you know, when I went around and talked to the businesses, I was a little startled to find how many of them said to me, you know, the county buys a lot of X and we sell that and they never buy it here. So I do think that that is an important thing. Um, but to be really honest, I think that the Trinity site uh, project, right now we spent 80% of our money off the hill. So that alone is going to help us once it finally gets here to help our local businesses. And, and when, you know, both um, the families that own the CB Fox store and the Metzger store are in favor of it because they know once we spend locally, we'll spend more money locally up here. So the bigger question is what are going to be, in addition to the zoning and the regulation and the, the things that we are directly in control of, there are going to be other partnership opportunities that come before us and it's going to be important which ones we decide to, to partner with or invest in or allow to have happen or or to invest in the infrastructure so that those projects can go forward. Um, I think that you know a lot of the ones that we talked about are important but the, the big question is we're not really going to have all the answers right in front of us and, and, and we're going to have to be wise about which ones we choose and which ones are really going to help the local businesses help the economy to diversify, help the local families and the people who are here to have their needs met in this town. I know there's somewhat of a myth that we just choose to leave all the time and really I think we're forced to leave a lot of the time. There's Sometimes we choose it, but it would be wonderful when we finally can actually get our needs and maintain our households and enjoy ourselves and spend our off time up here as well. Thank you. Thanks, Kristen. Michael, you're next. I think uh, we can all agree that there's a wide array of things that uh, the county can and should be doing. Um, one of the things that I think is uh, lobbying. Um, that's something that, uh, you know, we, um, the, the county itself can't change certain things, but as a county councilor, um, part of your responsibility is, is lobbying to our state government um, and even the federal government. Small things like, uh, you know, one of the things that I would like to see happen, which as a county councilor, I, I wouldn't have any uh, ability to change, but is looking at potentially, you know, the, the mail order businesses, why aren't they paying gross receipts tax? Um, if not here, where are their base, you know, to help uh, create a, a more equitable um, relationship where, you know, our, our local businesses can then compete uh, against that. Um, one of the things I think we can do locally, uh, once again, is updating the zoning code. I'm going to say it over and over again. Um, I think there's some great ways uh, that we can incentivize um, the, the, through our zoning uh, a lowering of uh, rental rates. You know, I know a lot of businesses have complained about the really high rents um, for commercial space in this town. Um, and that's something I think the county can do uh, to help make it easier for small businesses to actually um, pay their bills. Um, I know a lot of, of local uh, businesses have, have complained that you know the rents are, are real high here. Maybe um, you know twenty one dollars per square foot when you compare to uh, Santa Fe, and it, it's a third of that. So um, I think we, we need to find creative ways to incentivize, um, perhaps through the zoning or, or other means, uh, of making it easier for small businesses um, to stay afloat here. The role of the lab in our national security is not going to disappear. The lab budgets go up and down, sometimes severely, as we've noticed in the past year. There's a lot of scientific and engineering talent here, and some of them come up with creative new businesses. But they've often taken their growing businesses to less expensive locations. If we could make it possible for some of those people to grow their businesses here, those Alamos will be less dependent on the single budget of the National Laboratory. How do we do that? We find a way for beginning startups to get very cheap space, including helping projects like the Hive offer space and services they need. Once a startup company is beginning to grow, we need to continue supportive projects like the New Mexico Consortium. If uh, Cheaper space is still necessary, and we can't incentivize the private sector to provide it. We can get some county or lab transportables and set them up on, lab, on county space and offer that space cheaply to start up businesses. 
as businesses grow, we need to make sure we're working to make our town a nicer community and keep our schools and UNMLA as good as they can be so that their workers will want to continue to live here. The Ottawa Bookstore may have been a victim of internet competition for bookstores, but it served as a museum store and an important tourist attraction that offered science and local books and items that everybody in this town appreciated. It helped promote our town. I'm looking into getting the lab and or the county to help keep some kind of a museum store open there for the benefit of our whole community. Thanks, Pete. Then terrific. Our small businesses pay GRT tax to the county. And I feel one of the most important things that we can do as a county council is avoid an increase in the GRT tax rate in Los Alamos County. Uh, and that's, and in addition, our local businesses also spend for utilities. And that's why, as county councilor, I work with other councilors, and we were able to avoid a 10% increase in the electric uh, utility rate. These are the kinds of things that we have to focus on so that local government is not a burden and an obstacle for businesses. In addition, we have many businesses in our community that are, are not centrally located in the downtown. I think we have to afford them the opportunity to be able to advertise for their business off of their property, off-site advertising. And not only would I favor that as uh, off-site in, in the public domain, but I think if businesses want to advertise for the, on private property, they should be allowed to do so. And so we have to make some changes to our sign code to bring this about. And finally, uh, as we've seen over the last few years, uh, when road construction projects take place, there can be an impact on local businesses. Uh, and I feel we have to work with businesses and plan our road work so that it lessens the impact and the disruption to businesses when their patrons have to be diverted because of road construction. And the best example is, are the businesses uh, near the old Conoco gas station on Arkansas Street which almost went out of business during a prolonged period of time when road construction was taking place on Diamond Drive. We cannot repeat that in the future. Our businesses are having hard enough time as it is, and we can't make it more difficult for them by diverting traffic away. Thank you, Ms. Mark, you want to wrap this up? Yes, I would like to wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I read this question, I really thought the end of it was going to be, how can we help our community citizens and businesses? So I, I think with, with, with changing things to the laboratory, let me be a bit of a realist. If laboratory budget drops 10%, that's, that's a lot of money. That's $200 million uh, up to. So, you know, it, it's going to be tough for this county to make up $200 million. Uh, so we're going to have to really work hard at our efforts to try to, to diversify, but we're going to have to really concentrate on how can we partner with the laboratory to make sure that we're sustainable uh, as a town here while we work on these things. Uh, in keeping with that, if laboratory changes like that, uh, we as county members are going to have to focus on enabling and supporting and maintaining our vital services. It's going to come down to those kind of things like maintaining fire and hospital and police and all those kind of things. So let me talk about that first. You want to make sure that the, that the county is working and sustainable and safe as we get started. And then we can fo focus on things that align with what we're good at as a town. Well, what we're good at is we have, you know, one of the premier science laboratories in the nation right up there, right? So we're obviously good at high tech and engineering. So if we can really work with tech transfer and we can do things that, to help entrepreneurs here in Los Alamos to be successful and stay here and do, and do what our private public partnerships can do to make that work, that'd be great because we're, we're, we're pretty good at that kind of thing. So the county should be enabling that. Also, the setting, uh, Pete mentioned uh, tourism. That would be something that we would be really be working on. We should focus on attracting people to this lovely place to be. Even though the fire looks like it burned half of it down, it's getting prettier all the time. So, you know, it, it, it'll come back and we'll work on that. Uh, I'm glad Michael talked about lobbying. I mentioned that at a student government council meeting we had just a couple of days ago. I talked about we have to lobby with our uh, state representatives and our state uh, elected officials to try to help those things that makes New Mexico a non-business friendly state and see if we can affect change in those areas and lobby those things to try to help us Alamos because it will help everybody including us. So that's something as a county we can do collectively. Okay, so that's
That brings us to the closing comments segment. Um, each candidate will have three minutes each. You're by no means obligated to use all three minutes, so feel free. Uh, and despite the fact that we have three Democrats and three Republicans vying for three open seats on the council, I think a lot of folks, as, as we've seen these, this, this gauntlet of forums kind of unfold this election season, uh, see a lot of similarities between the candidates and their positions on things. So as part of your closing statements this evening, if you would, please address how you would differentiate yourself from the other candidates in terms of how, if elected, uh, you would work for business and economic interests to flourish here in Los Alamos. Uh, and to get things rolling, Pete, you would lead it off. <clears throat> I'm Pete Sheehan, and I'm asking for your vote to put me on county council. When I first came here in 1986, I immediately felt this was a place I'd like to live. The work was good, the country was beautiful, and the people were smart and friendly. That's all still true, but in 2012, we've got some problems to work on. People are concerned about getting good value for all the money the county spends about how we can make our town more inviting to everyone, from students and single people, to families with children, to retired people. I've been all of these in my time here. I think I can offer a balanced approach to help meet these concerns. I'm focused on some very fundamental things. Communication, prioritization, fiscal responsibility, and sustainability. Communication means listening to telling people honestly and clearly what our issues and choices are. That's where consistent priorities are developed. I have the time and energy to look at every detail of how we're spending money, to make sure we get good value for those dollars, and to make sure we run all our public service and services and facilities in an efficient and sustainable way. People are in pretty good agreement when I list priorities. Public safety, infrastructure, education, and economic development, followed by improving our recreational amenities. Economic development is a priority for this community. We can support the businesses and recreational amenities that will make this a more family-friendly community, and we can make it easier for small business to thrive here, especially in downtown Los Alamos and White Rock. The county can use its land and focused infrastructure improvements to make lower price housing and commercial space available. And we can work harder at getting tourists up here to enjoy our unique historical, scientific, and out outdoor recreational opportunities. A thousand more tourists per month, or a thousand more people living up here instead of leaving the county every day after work, would help revitalize our town. These are goals that can be reached as long as we work toward them in a smart and consistent way. We can afford all the important things for our community as long as we prioritize. I'm Pete Sheehy, and I'm asking for your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Vince, next. In these uncertain times, with the budget of Lanel uh, not being certain, now more than ever, we need a county councilor who's been tried and tested. One who has a proven record of remaining steadfast in the face of determined opposition. I believe that I possess those qualities. My approach to government is one uh, where I'm an independent thinker and I make up my own mind on the issues. I'm not afraid to take the minority position when the minority position is the right position for our citizens and our families and our small businesses. And that's why as county councilor, I stood with our firemen in 2010 when the council imposed a contract on them. They stand for us and they work under very difficult conditions and, as, and I was one of the few people to stand with them because it's unfair to impose a contract on our firemen. On the issue of the LAGRI petition, I feel, I, I felt, and I refused to dismiss the petition, even though there was a legal controversy. Because I feel that legal questions ought to be decided in court after an election. And our citizens have a right to weigh in and vote 
on a charter amendment that was signed by more than 2,000 citizens. We have many challenges facing our community in the future. And I feel that I have the energy, the ideas, and the determination to represent all of our citizens and help us achieve our goals. And that's why I ask for your vote on November 6th so I can continue and we can work together and continue to put principles ahead of politics. Thank you. Thanks, Vince. Mark, you're up next. Kind of threw us a curveball by asking us to modify our closing statement. So, uh, but I'm nothing if I'm not adaptable. Uh, I, I think differentiation, the first thing I'll talk about is I have a very practical experience living in Los Alamos and White Rock and Northern New Mexico for 40 years. I, I've lived as the citizen. Uh, I, I've seen what, what, what the community can give, what it can lack, and what we need to do uh, to try to bolster that. Uh, I, I've been on the board for Leadership Los Alamos for eight years. I have studied the issues in depth. I have tried to provide training to people on the issues. So uh, I'm trying to give them the, the tools that they need to succeed. So, so I understand the issues part of it exceptionally well and, and, and the things that we need to work on. And finally, uh, from a differentiation, I, I possess the combination of, uh, of leadership and creativity and innovative thought that, that you need in a person on county council. Uh, uh, so those are some differentiation things that I can talk about. Uh, now I'll go to my closing statement, other part of it. Uh, uh, I think Los Alamos is a great place to live today. And I want to serve on the council to help shape and improve the community for tomorrow. I am inspired when people with a positive attitude, enthusiasm, and commitment have the desire to work together to achieve top common goals. I want to work with the county council, the outstanding county staff, and the community to create and maintain such an energized environment with the objective of transforming energy, passion, and innovative thoughts and ideas into tangible results. I want to help this move Los Alamos forward to add vitality to the community by enabling vibrant, cost-conscious economic development and improved infrastructure that generates excitement and makes people want to stay and live here. I'm committed to soliciting and incorporating the needs and desires of all members of our community as we plan and implement our economic improvement efforts. I want to help increase affordable housing as we grow our community. I will collaborate with all Los Alamos schools to enhance education opportunities and facilities. I want to build lasting coalitions and cultivate community and regional relationships to keep our rich heritage connected to today's world and position Los Alamos as a trusted partner in the future. As a taxpayer myself, I am also mindful of the necessity to be physically responsible in all initiatives and not create hardship for the taxpayers, myself included. I will base all of my decisions and actions on a foundation of core values that you expect out of your elected leaders that include honesty, integrity, responsibility, accountability, courage, fairness, and servant leadership. The choices made in Los Alamos need to keep us pointed in a direction that sustainably shapes and improves all aspects of our community. With the right leadership and innovative ideas, we can create our collective vision of making Los Alamos a town with the kind of energy, opportunities, and quality of life where people want to stay and live. I am that leader, and I have those ideas. And I look forward to your vote on November 6th. For more information, you can go to my website, www.clayforcouncil.com. Thank you, and I hope to see your vote on November 6th. Thanks, Mark. Steve. So my day job is to listen. Uh, listen carefully, because usually things are brought in front of me that have already had subject matter experts do serious trade studies on and provide optimized solutions, but I have to weigh and measure. I have to understand uh, capability impacts, uh, make cost-benefit analyses. Um, I have to trust the subject matter experts. I have to trust the staff that's doing the work, and then I have to figure out when not to meddle and when to um, verify. But then eventually you have to decide. Okay. So the other point I want to make is that I'm also an engineer with limited analysis capability, patience. I got 90% solution is what we were trained, and then you start moving on something. Uh, I'm not an alarmist. I'm not an alarmist. I've been, uh, um, I'm a pragmatist. I'm a negotiator. I'm a team player. Nothing progresses in this town for the council unless there's four votes.
and I think I can work as a team player and work and make that consensus happen and the consensus happen to move the activities forward, whatever those objectives goals are. So I am committed to sustaining the quality of life we enjoy, a safe place to live, quality schools, unique recreational and cultural venues, and a no better place to raise a family. I will be decisive to progress effective government. I will look for and champion practical solutions that responsibly serve to balance the community's expectations for services with available revenues. So most sincerely, I am asking for your vote. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Steve. First of all, I want to say we are an incredibly fortunate community. This is an amazing place to live, and when you look at the, the state and when you look at the nation, we are we are so very fortunate here. Um, and our problems are absolutely the nice to have problems. You know, gee whiz, are we spending our money fairly? You know, are we spending it wisely? You know, lucky us. Um, and I think um, <clears throat> the things that differentiate me, besides the obvious, from my from my cohorts up here, are my. <laughs> I, I love that joke. I say it every time. Um, <laughs> my perspective. <laughs> my perspective. My background and my goals. Although in many ways, I think a lot of us have the same goals. The question is, who is going to be well, let me carry on. With my perspective, I believe that, first of all, in every job I have ever had, and frankly in dealing with my little kids, my main job is to listen to people and to understand and to really hear what their real issue is. And one of the things I learned in my various works, fields of work, both in technology and in houses, is what people say they want, you really have to keep listening to them to get at what, at what their main concern is. And, and that is the one thing I'm very good at, and I'm good at trying to bring it all together and, and, and find the commonality. Where, where are our common goals? Um, another thing is that I am out there all the time in terms of being on a daily basis running into families. I work in White Rock and I talk to families. I'm at ballet pickup. I'm at swim team pickup. I'm talking to families all the time, and I absolutely have my ear to the ground. One of the issues we have, I believe, as a form of government is communication with our communities. And I'm running to work within that process. We have at-large counselors. We need to show up. We need to email. We need to be at the council meetings to get heard. And that's one of the reasons I'm running is to try to be the voice of those people who like some reasonable progress and our families. And I'm out there listening to them on a daily basis. Um, and, and in my background as an attorney, I'm very well versed in the law. I'm also able to understand a lot of the things that come before the council. I am not ready to be the county's attorney, but I can certainly bring that fundamental understanding to council and hope to share that. Um, and with my real estate background, I, like I said, I know our neighborhoods and I know a lot of our issues and I'm able to be creative with coming up with some potential solutions. And our housing truly is an issue up here. Um, and, and thirdly, my goals. My main goal is that we are an amazing town, but we do need to evolve, and we do need to meet the needs of all of us. And with at-large counselors, the counselors need to listen to, to everybody and to help create a town with all the things that might come before us to make our decisions, taking into account all the people who live here and all of our various goals and weighing them and moving forward. I believe in having a great town that will help the lab, a great town will help economic development, and I believe having, um, okay, I have to stop. <laughs> Thank you very much. I ask you for your vote November 6th. Thank you, Kirsten. All right, I think uh, all of us will say that um, we want to spend the, the money that the county has wisely. The question is, how do you make the decision of what's a, a wise expenditure of money? Um, and I'm going to go and, and do the incredible obvious uh, distinction of myself. I'm willing to bet I'm the youngest person standing here in front of you. I'm probably one of the youngest people in this room. Um, and that gives me a very different perspective. I, um, you know, I, I, this is my home, and I aspire to one day retire here. I don't have children yet, but I hope one day I have grandchildren who uh, choose to stay in this town. And so my decision-making processes are, are going to really keep that um, in mind. I uh, want to make decisions, you know, what's not just, but uh, 
10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. I, I want to make sure that our investments are for the long term. Um, and particularly given my, my background um, in environmental planning um, and you know, the, the environmental conservation work that I've done, I think that I'm very well suited to uh, making those decisions, um, to looking at ways in, in you know, the way that we implement our projects, the way that we spend our money, how can we get the most for our expenditures over the long term. And I really am, am looking towards the long term, not just the short term. Yes, we need to survive um, the economic difficulties we have now in order to get to the long term, um, but if we go in the long term, uh, we're gonna still be in difficulties when we get there. Um, so I think that's one of the, the biggest ways uh, that I think I um, can differentiate myself from the, the rest of my cohort here. Um, and on top of that, I guess, uh, rather than asking you for your vote on November 6th, I'd like to remind you, you can already vote early, so I'm going to ask you to go to the county clerk tomorrow and vote for me tomorrow. <laughs> vote early and vote often, that's right. Um, You're a young smart one. <laughs> Made it through all four segments. Melanie didn't have to ring the bell once. Uh, so I, I really want to thank the candidates, all of you. Uh, the, the, the idea that uh, you are willing to serve and serve your community and serve your country is, is great. And so we applaud that. I thank you all for being here.